Hey everybody, we're going to make two videos today discussing various aspects of these beautiful motorcycles I and a lot of you love. It's important to understand that new discoveries and information is constantly coming to light. When they built this stuff, most of it wasn't written down, and what was written down, most of it no longer exists. So you have to play detective. So at one time, everybody knew the world was flat. We know it. The sun revolves around the earth. We knew it for a fact. Then they invented a telescope and had a big giant discovery of, gee, the earth revolves around the sun. And there's other planets that revolve around the sun. And then it took quite a few hundred years to discover there was more than five planets. Then there was seven, and then there was nine, and then the ninth one got devoted to a dwarf planet. Oh, and there's something called Ceres, and now they just discovered this dwarf planet has an atmosphere. New discoveries are always coming to light. When you're dealing with this stuff, it's the same stuff. And it's very tempting to make a concrete statement. And that's the problem with the book. You made a concrete statement. And sometimes you did a typo, and sometimes you misstated. Sometimes your information was completely wrong because you got it third party. So I'm trying to deal with direct information. Direct information is the motorcycles and the literature I've been able to acquire or borrow. And between the two, maybe we can kind of sort of figure out what kind of sort of really happened. Because none of it was written down and it was done as they needed to do it. Not because they went to a book and says, well, that's what we're doing today because that's what the book says. That's not how it was done. So new information has come to light. So this video is about this new information. We're going to go around the room, take a look at these bikes. Today we're discussing the Eagle Fender Tips. Now I don't know for sure to a given year exactly what year they were made. I've never personally seen a earlier bike that for sure had an Eagle Tip back in the day that I know of, that I can think of at this present moment of making this video, pre-40. So maybe they came out in 40, maybe they came out in 42, maybe it was a post-war thing, I don't know. But I have pictures of this bike, this police bike here, in the very early 40s. And it has those eagle tips on it. So that gives us a timeline. So it seems that they were made pre-war. And there's a difference between a front tip and a rear tip, and they don't fit on pan heads. That's our 40 police bike here. Now, as you can see, this does not appear, and perhaps it is because it's faded, to be a brass tip. That's the discussion here. Because when I made the previous video on the uh, fender tips, I swore up and down they didn't make a brass tip. And this is the new information we have. Yes, they did. This here, as you can see on the scuffing, is definitely not a brass tip. And as far as I'm aware, they were put on at the same time. Now we'll go over to Baby, which is going to be our second video of the day. These are the tips the motorcycle came with. And again, it does not appear to be a brass tip. As you can see, that type of corrosion would not happen on brass. So it's definitely not a brass tip. Now I'm at Oli, and son of a bitch, I just made that video. Just freaking made the video. I never made a brass tip, and there's one sitting there only. I'm a son of a bitch. But he wanted 400 bucks for it. I wasn't about to spend $400 just to prove myself wrong. Here's Mr. Bill's rear tip. And some of you might recall when I got called out on the front tip, well, that's a repop. It's like, fuck me. Okay, so I've dug through my tips, and oh, well, okay, somebody put it wrong tip on and here's the tip in the box which we put on the bike and made a video of it it came on Mr. Bill originally and you can see the scuff mark on the 
original paint fender and on the tip. So that is the tip that was originally on the bike. And here we have old blue on 47 here. And this is the bike that was kept for decades under grease. This is why it's so nice. And it was discovered about 23 years ago by the second owner. And he got a call. My husband died, and we hear you're into old bikes. And he goes over and says, yeah, I guess I'm interested. So he got it stupid cheap. That's okay. Now let's go look at our box of tips here. We're going to do a little comparison. Now, the videos are very specific. Uh, or videos. Uh, just wording that. <clears throat> the invoices are very specific. Cracked myself there. In that post-war, massive material shortages. So evidently, they made brass tips in an attempt to compensate for the lack of material of what they were. So we just bought this one here. This is an eBay find. And I'm gonna zoom in on this tip and then we're gonna go through the other box. Right there. That, my friends, is a brass tip. The bottom, you see all the brass right there? So I was incorrect. I'm gonna use that zooming. I can show you the other tips here without being the back of the camera. So it's weighty, it's definitely brass. This is a much lighter original fender tip here. It's original tip, totally different weight. Different weight, obviously not brass. Different stamping, these are all different stampings. Very weighty, doesn't appear to be brass. So, I have no way to confirm it is or isn't. I don't have a brass tester. Different weight again, these are all original tips. Different weight. I mean, it's obvious enough I can hold it in my hand and tell it's a different weight. Different stampings. And another tip here, which does not appear to be brass. Could be. Again, I don't have a brass tester. I do see a glint of something there. And here's the problem. See, when you chrome plate something, you have to, if it's, shall we say, steel, you have to plate it with a uh, copper and then brass and then chrome. So just because it's got a plating on it doesn't necessarily mean it's brass. But this here has enough fade on the chrome and it's heavy enough, I'm going to call that brass. And the one I saw at Ole was definitely brass. It had very little chrome left. I'm like, oh man, at 400 bucks, I ain't buying it just to prove a point. So I just got two off of eBay, totally different weights. Here's the one of eBay tip, different weight than this one. Real similar stamping, but different. And you look at the different eagle, eagle breasts and eagle head. I mean, they're just different stampings. So, but here, it's a press. Boom, boom, boom. Every time it wears a little bit. Oop, it broke. Okay, make some more. Well, let's assume for a second. Again, I have no concrete definitive catalog that I've noticed. Oh, there's a fender tip in any of my accessory books, but they made a lot in di uh, different ones over the years. I have never yet found, personally, an advertisement in Harley's literature for the Eagle tip. So I don't know for sure when they started making them, but we have our 40 with history with photos to pre-war with those tips on it. So I'm assuming, again, it's an assumption, that they made the tips pre-war, but I don't know this for a fact. But let's add this up. They're obviously made for current bikes. They made approximately hmm, just knuckleheads, 
about 14,000 to 18,000 off the top of my head, 40 to 42s, not to mention your big flatheads and your 45s, so conservatively 30,000 bikes pre-war, and then conservatively another 30 to 40,000 bikes post-war and the knuckleheads. So they made tips and they made accessories and they were an accessory in the box, blah, blah, blah. So they probably made somewhere between 50 and 75,000 Eagle tips conservatively because there's a front and rear, two per bike. So they made a lot. In post-war, they're running material shortages. So it doesn't surprise me that I got proved wrong but without a brass tester, but that is definitely brass underneath that chrome. But we're going to call that a brass tip. And so that's the new relevant information, and those are all real tips, and every one of them is a different pattern. And it's, this is actually a really important tip here, because that's not a rechrome, as far as I can tell. And you can totally see where in the pattern. And I'm calling it not a rechrome because there's no hint of polishing. Do you understand the difference? If it's polished, I'd have wheel marks underneath. And I have none. I'm going to show you real fast what I'm talking about. I should have pulled this out earlier, but I didn't. There's a different part. And I was hoping it was... The guy couldn't tell me or wouldn't tell me. I can find it here. Here we go. And I got this on eBay, and so I couldn't see in the photos. I didn't ask him. But now I see it in person. If you look carefully, you can see the wheel marks underneath the chrome. It's not perfectly straight across. So this is a chromed after the fact. It's hardly would just dipped brand new metal. So it's original but it's not Harley Chrome. And I was hoping it was, but it's not. But luckily, it didn't cost me very much. It's hardly certainly offered Chrome brakes. But uh, that's uh, what we would call a re-Chrome. It's been polished. But see, there's no wheel marks on that. There's no evidence of polishing. So I'm real familiar with that process due to the history I have with these bikes. And years ago, I used to build custom bikes and have stuff chromed and watch stuff happen. We did a lot of that stuff back in the day. So, anyhow, so that's our update on the fender tips. And uh, as I find new information, as I've done throughout this uh, series of videos over the years, I will present it and explain why I'm thinking this or that and any documentation I have. But we have proof that they made brass in the actual part. So they must have been scrambling, again, for materials. We'll use some of this because we can't get none of that. And there you have it. We'll see you guys on the next video.